And when a rice cooker donated by a teacher is used as water bath for science experiment, you know that there's challenge. Now, when over 30 students huddle around a single laptop for ICT lessons, all in an era when science and engineering are being used to make a difference in many facets of life, you would be right to question, can these students compete on the world stage and participate in the ICT drive? This is the story of Kajibi Asato, Senior High School in the OT region, a piece by our OT regional correspondent, Peter Seno. There are so many things we, we lack in this lab. Uh, for example, the, the, the gas pipeline is not working. It's not in a good shape. Some of the chemicals, they are obsolete. Uh -huh. They are no more in use. They are out of date. So we, we, we need uh, a replacement for, for some of them. Yeah. If you check the lab right now, we only have some few uh, hydrochloric acid left. Uh -huh. So when it comes to the uh, practicals, like our activities, uh -huh, we, we suffer a lot. Chemistry practicals, uh, students have to fill it individually. Uh, so when you do it like that, when, you, when the master is doing it here, it serves as just a demonstration. So uh, it's, it, it's definitely affecting the students. So they have to feel it themselves. Sometimes when we are about to do the practical, because of the inadequate apparatus or equipment, we come as a group. But for the chemistry, we need to do individual so that we can feel the thing. But because of the inadequate apparatus, we come as a group to do it. So some of us don't understand. Pipelines have spot for some years ago. And due to this, students are not able to perform practical such as the heat experiment. So the only thing we do here is that a teacher will stand and do the whole thing. And when it's been done, students are to see and copy, of which you don't feel the reality of the experiment. So when you get to your YC and you are to do the same experiment, then you find yourself wanting. Biology lab, yeah, I think um, we have um, certain equipment which we can use for now. Just that uh, we, I think we need a projector. As you are seeing, we are just using my laptop to teach, and then we also need a, a water bath. Uh, talking about projector, is that why the students are crowded in front of one laptop? Yes, actually, we need uh, the projector so that at least we can view from afar. If not, I mean, they can watch from afar. We just need a projector. Anytime we want to do a um, test for any food substance, we need the water bath, like I already said. So in place of the water bath, we are using the rice cooker. Dip the rack inside, and then what I do is that we put the test tubes inside so that it can be properly held together in place. Some of the items we don't have it, such as the gas pipes, so we can't even perform the heat experiment in physics, and it is really much disturbing. And then also, the biology lab, for instance, we don't have certain. Um, solutions which will make us do uh, practical such as food test and also we don't have a water bath for heat um, source in doing this food test experiment and it really makes us not to do the experiment to our satisfaction. Some of the equipment we have are old and they are no longer functioning so we need new ones. The one supplied by the government is not enough to cater for the number of students that we have. Looking at the, the nature of the lab, some of the things, the, the, lab, the benches are not in good order, as you can see, they, are, they, they have broken, others have been eaten by weavers. So I am appealing to the old students and the government to help us. Uh... Now joining me for a discussion on this is Peter Ante Party, who is the executive director for the Institute of Education Studies, IFEST, and Bafo Che Frederick, past president Ghana Student Chemical Society. Now, let me begin with you, Bafo Che Frederick. How would you describe science education in Ghana? Yeah, good evening. Um, science education in Ghana, I think um, we, are, we, we, we are doing our best, but it's not up to the you see, because science is more of practical instead of um, theor the theoretical aspect. Mm -hmm. So um, if we have more of um, practical science, that will be of more benefit to students and um, the, the, the teachers as well. And then at the end of the day, we would 
have the ability to um, invent. Definitely, we will have the ability to invent. Yeah. Now, now you you've been taught uh, science as well. What is your own experience of being taught without the appropriate apparatus? Uh, seriously, it's it's a big issue because science itself um, goes with concepts which are not um, which are not concrete. It goes with concepts which are abstract. You know, there are certain instances that you'll be dealing with um, substances, and then you are. Are uh, asked to measure them in grams. In fact, they are minute, in minute quantities, especially in chemistry. Okay, so if um you don't have those, those apparatus, sincerely, the learning of science becomes very tedious for students to even understand the normal concepts. Yeah, uh, you, you are now a teacher yourself. Uh, what's the situation in in where you are now? Um, right now, I would say the situation I find myself in as a teacher is the same situation I find myself in when I was a student. Because um, way back in school, we learned, and then the only time we had the chance to do practicals was when we were getting to our final year for our WASI. Mm. And then it's, it's the same this time because... Um, it is only during the, the, the final year that funds are being provided for uh, the purchase of apparatus, purchase of um, certain chemicals and reagents, and, 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 and that's it, you mm. see. So if we are done with the practical, then that's, that's all. You know, but sincerely, I personally feel that when we are teaching, there are certain topics that have a particular line with practicals. It, it goes in line with the practical aspect of science, okay? In order for the students to really understand the concept we are teaching. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, let me bring in uh, Mr. Ante here for, for him to join the discussion. Uh, but Peter, you, you've been in, in the sector for some time now. How widespread is this development in our schools? Thank you very much spread issue across secondary schools in Ghana. Um, you would have uh, uh, only schools that are classified as science schools that technically would have some of these uh, labs functioning properly. Mm. Apart from that, there are certain schools that have benefited from um, the uh, uh, benevolence of NGOs and other um, organizations. And these schools would have labs that are a little bit more modern. Now, when you take these two groups of schools that I've mentioned out, all our secondary schools do not have functioning science laboratories. Mm. Mm. Now, now, as you heard the teacher say that, I, I, during my time when I was doing science as well, we used to travel to another school to do practicals, and, and that was uh, even at, on, on rare occasions. So why has this persisted in our schools for all these years without change? Uh, it's, it's because of the policy direction that we, we, we have as a country. We, we seem to be a country that is a little bit more focused on the rhetorics rather than going down to see what the real challenges are and trying to find out feasible solutions to address our challenges. We have been a country that, that seeks to focus more on a living legacy project and ensuring that every every leader of the sector, I mean the education sector, leaves something or the government leaves something that can be attended as their a, a achievement. And, and that is why we have not been able to do a complete audit of these science labs, although we seem to to project that we are interested in science and uh, STEM education that every little opportunity that the authorities get, they, they, they want to let us understand that they are doing a lot within the sector. Well, um, uh, we'll, we'll rectify a party's line there so we can continue. But um, I, I still have with me Che on the line, who is a past. Uh, uh, OK, so uh, party, I'm told you are, you are back. Um, uh, let, Hello, let, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. But yeah. uh, did you say this is this is in all, all schools are facing this challenge, or you said it's it's widespread? I said it's widespread. Mm. I, it's you take the category A schools that are classified as science 
schools. And then I said that schools that have benefited from the benevolence of NGOs and other institutions, those are the schools that you can take out. And these schools are not even up to um, um, uh, 20% of the entire senior high schools that we have. Mm. Technically, all senior high schools are supposed to have a functioning laboratory because integrated science is a core subject and students would have to go to the labs to have a physical, uh, I mean, a physical interaction with some of these things for them to appreciate how it works. Mm. Another thing that we have we have not uh, averted our minds to is the, the idea of doing simulations instead of dealing with physical labs. So, for example, the teacher that was talking mm. about um, the, the, the kind of chemicals and other things that they have, in, in, in most modern classrooms, these things are carried out by just a computer experiments and other things. And that would mean that every secondary school is supposed to have a functioning electricity system, a functioning computer lab, system, lab and a functioning projector, at least one in that mm. particular school. So that the science teachers would now do simulations instead of maybe us trying to build a whole uh, structure that we call a science lab. That is also lacking in the schools. So well, well, is, well, well is, so, so, so Peter, we, we now know the challenge. What must we do to change the narrative? Where do we begin from? I think I, the, the first thing we need to do is to do an audit of our science labs in the in the country. We need to have a clear understanding. And, and for me, I always want to get the, the real figures as they are supposed to be. So let's get an understanding of the, the, the number of uh, 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 science labs that we have and the ones that are functioning and the ones that are not functioning. Let's get an understanding of what we need to provide for these schools. Then the second thing we need to do is to start training our teachers to use some of these simulations when it comes to science practicals mm -hmm. and provide them with the needed resources. It's good that they are giving them laptops now, but all schools should have a, a working or functioning projector and at least, uh, at least a science, I mean a computer lab where the science students can be taken to and then uh, 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 go, go through, go through the, the right. practical sessions. Thank you very much. Uh, che, che, for you, what do you think must be done? Because you are on the field. Okay, um, I personally think the government needs to intervene. The government mm. must intervene because everything boils back to the government. Okay. Yeah, and then personally, before the government intervene, we, the teachers, also have to adapt improvisation techniques. You see, because there are certain times that you need to really teach something. You need to really let the students understand a particular concept in a particular direction. You see, okay. you may not have the standard materials available. So what you have to do is that you, you need to have innovate, to you mean. Okay. All right. So um Jay, I'm, I'm grateful. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, Jay is uh, a past uh, chemical student president and also Peter Patianti is into educational analysis or consultancy there. <laughs>